Ladies and people who don't dress as fabulously as us. Andy here, author of the best Tinder guide on the internet and this chick as well. This is the Kill You and the Loser show. Let's fucking go. Hi. Hi. So we did a 50,000. We did a video about how we hit $50,000 in a month. Mm -hmm. Go back and watch that video if you haven't watched that. It's actually a little more than that. We actually gone a little more than that still in the month. So that's pretty cool. But we did a video on how we did that. How you guys can do it to lessons you can learn stuff we fucked up which there was a whole lot of things we fucked up limiting beliefs that we had before that how we overcame them if we can do it you sure as hell can too so so we're gonna do a little q a answering a bunch of your questions you guys you guys gave us some cool questions we're gonna have a bit of fun with this hence the cool outfits look what she's wearing okay. looks ridiculous absolutely just stupid what i'm wearing okay. looks great so let's get straight into it with no further ado max says how did you get to $50,000 a month? That's top secret. We actually did answer that. So just go and watch the previous video. Um, he actually asked these questions before I put the other video out. So go and watch that one. It's the previous video on my channel. That just explains everything. But really the short answer is we just fucking tried. I hadn't really tried before that. Went all in, obsessed about it, made it happen. That's it. Sure, I mean, I can give more answers. Like Yeah, give value. because for them, it wasn't like, oh, I should just try. Like that's not going to... But like in terms of the tangibles of what you actually did, it was that we, you had a couple of people sign up, two clients sign up for the one-on-one coaching. You're being far too serious for someone wearing a bow tie right now. <laughs> Why are you answering these questions seriously? It's supposed to be a fun, silly Q&A and here you are answering the questions seriously. So the answer is just fucking try it. There you go. That's the answer. But no, we did. So we, we went all in. I've interrupted you. Continue your story. <laughs> So there were two clients that signed up within the 30 days and mm -hmm. that got us to 30,000 mm -hmm. and it was getting kind of close. And I think we also had a group sign up, so it was 35. And then there was that discussion of like, well, we're getting close. How about we actually try? Yeah. And so I mentioned it a bunch, spammed the fuck out of it with you guys. I was like, yo, fucking listen up, guys. $50,000 a month if I get there. I will release dick pics. You, you can, already have dick pics. I've already released dick pics. I'll release more dick pics for you guys. I'll do whatever you fucking want. I will be your slave. Let's get to 50,000. A couple of people were like, I would love to see those dick pics. And I'm willing to pay $10,000 per dick pic. And so that's how we got to 50,000 a month. To actually answer the question seriously, just go watch the previous fucking video. We already answered the question seriously. We did actually answer it seriously. Yep. So the next question is, how much of the revenue is from coaching and how much is from other streams? This is a good question. So 99% of it is from coaching, honestly. So I can, we make a little bit of money from affiliate. Why don't I share this right now? Mm -hmm. I hope you're allowed to share this shit. You probably are. Amazon probably say that you can't. Amazon can suck my ass. So... Uh, can you please fucking hold the control button? Because I only have one hand because I don't have a fucking microphone stand. Yeah. Perfect. So over on here, this is like the last month, guys. So on Amazon affiliates, we've only earned 116 bucks this month. That's about average. We earn between $100 and $200 a month from mm -hmm. Amazon affiliates. And so what that is, is that's people who buy like stuff that I recommend. I don't recommend a lot of stuff. It's like the camera that I recommend, some mm -hmm. of the books that I recommend. Mm -hmm. um, but for that stuff, you don't make much money. So like if someone buys the camera that I recommend, I think we make about $20. Sure. And the camera itself is... Yeah, like $1,000 or something. Yeah. If someone buys a book that I recommend, I think we make about 50 cents or something or a dollar. So maybe like 50 cents. So it's not a lot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once you've set it up, the good thing about affiliate stuff is once you've set it up, it's a hassle to set up. But once it's set up, you get free money what feels like free money i'm not doing anything for this hundred dollars so it's really nice that that just comes in we earn about another 100 dollars roughly maybe 150 dollars a month roughly for bathmate which is the penis pump thing again that's just something i've mentioned in a couple of videos a couple of articles and stuff like that so i don't do a lot to talk about that at all really mm -hmm. i'll mention it if it comes up i'll be like yeah if you want a harder dick use the bathmate and Again, that's set up so that just keeps sort of coming in. About another 50 to $100 from recommending sex toys. Mm -hmm. So probably the biggest one is the magic wand, um, the vibrator, but yeah, some ropes and stuff like that. 
so that in total is what did i just say maybe 200 to 300 dollars a month mm. it's probably like 250 on an average month so not a lot no not much at all yeah like fuck all remembering that we just hit fifty thousand dollars in the last month so that's pretty much entirely coaching so yes. at this point yeah my coat my this whole thing that i'm doing this whole setup is not at all passive and my point is to or my mission is to get it to a point where it's passive because i don't i fucking love coaching but at the moment i'm working with what like six coaching clients one-on-one -on -one, and then like another i don't know like 15 group clients and that's a lot of work i want i I don't like the word work because it's fucking fun and it's incredibly rewarding. But each of my coaching calls go for, you know, a couple of hours. Although there's it's one game, awesome. one game in particular that always does short calls. He only wants to talk to me for like an hour and then he gets sick of me. But most of them go for like two to three hours. And when you times that by like five or six or seven people, and then you add on the group calls, which are seven hours and sorry, three hours. And then when you add on the fact that, you know, there's the Facebook group and I'm in there for at least an hour or two a day. It does start to add up so my mission is to eventually do this passive so i can focus more on the content i do often feel like i don't get anywhere near as much time to do content as i want mm. i think we're pretty consistent i put out at least one video a week mm -hmm. and i haven't broken that in like two years or something mm. and on top of the video i also do one spotify podcast a week every single week so i'm pretty consistent mm. but i feel like that's i would like to be able to put more focus on it because I think that's the thing that actually helps more people. My coaching definitely helps, but I'm working with one person. I'm helping, and yes, I'm making a lot of changes and genuinely helping that person and changing their fucking life, but that's one person at a time. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to be able to focus more on passive income. So that's the mission. So yeah, we'll do more of that. We are also selling uh, the ebook that I wrote or the, the book plus video course, the how to have a threesome guide. So that, how many of those do we sell? Cause you're kind of monitoring that more than me. I'm not doing Probably any of that one every two weeks yeah so we're selling like two of those and those are 250 dollars each and once you take away fees and all of that you know it, we don't pay much in fees for those so that's probably another 500 dollars us from books and video yeah. courses so the mission is that we're eventually going to do or we're still working on making a lot more of that content that kind mm -hmm. of video guy content so the one i'm working on right now is a how to get stuck into or how to get started with bdsm mm -hmm. how to become a bdsm god we're doing that one right now that's my god that's going to be so fucking big yeah but probably as big as the tinder guide lots, of lots yeah. to talk about yeah that one's fun after that we're going to do a revision of the tinder guide which is going to be a hell of a lot more um we're going to cover topics that i didn't cover in the free tinder guide mm -hmm. and it's also going to be a lot more i guess you'd say user friendly because the tinder guide is very long Sure. It's very comprehensive yeah. and long. And so what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to do like a short and fast Tinder guide, like in video form. And it'll have most of the stuff from the Tinder guide. And then on top of that, I'm going to do, and here's the in-depth video guide. Mm -hmm. So you can just watch the quick start guide, so to speak. And like, I don't know how long it'll be, maybe four hours, five, something small, you know, four hours, three hours. And you watch that and you go, okay, I know 80% of what I need to do. And then there's the really in-depth video guide, which is going to cover like more than the Tinder guide. So we're doing that. On top of that, we're thinking about, we've talked about this before, probably something towards my target audience. Because mm -hmm. um, my target audience, you guys tend to be very like in the tech industry, very nerdy, you know, probably because I am too. Something targeted towards that audience. So less so for most of you listening, because most of you guys are already sort of on the path it'll this will be for like newcomers so for instance how to meet women in the tech industry how to meet women if you work in the tech industry i have so much to say on that most of my friends work in the tech industry i i most of my clients are in the tech industry there's a hell of a lot there i think that's an audience that i can really 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 serve because a lot of them don't give themselves permission to do the stuff that we're doing mm -hmm. and so a lot of the guide will basically be like no hr are not going to come and fire you if you set up a tinder account which is like one of the biggest freaking concerns. Sure, that someone will find them and then going to get yeah, like... Yeah, you're going to go to jail because you have a Tinder account. And so it'll be like navigating the landscape of like Me Too and like, you know, not that I give a shit about that stuff, but I understand that that market does. And so it'll be like basically gently telling them, no, nothing bad is going to happen if you tell a woman, hey, you're cute. Would you like to talk to me for a minute? Can I get your number? Nothing bad is going to happen. So mm. that one next. And then after that, we'll see what we're doing. But... Yeah, to, to summarize, to answer that question, 95.9% of our, 98% of our money comes from coaching. coaching. 
mm-hmm. but we're going to switch that up more to do more affiliate and probably more video course. I don't think we'll make much from affiliate. If No, unless you somehow, we somehow like 10 times <clears throat> the traffic, but. Yeah. So over time you'll make more from affiliate and that's one of the good things about doing affiliate stuff, guys. And, and to recap, affiliate just means you mention a product that you like and you have a link to go buy that and you get like a little bit of money if someone buys that. I like there's products I love and I talk about them, mm. but I'm not like a product reviewer. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. basic shit that I tell you guys to get, but most of what I recommend to you guys are books. And like I said, books make me 50 fucking cents if you buy them. Yeah, like, or philosophies. So a lot of it, like you can yeah. recommend things here and there, but it's not something that comes up a hell of a lot. Yeah, because for the most part, like stuff that you guys would spend your money on, I would rather see you guys spend money on books and yeah, philosophies, as you say, which is just books, coaching, whether that's with me or a different coach. And you could say things like improving your looks. So like a personal trainer, um, a coach at the gym, a decent gym membership, clothes, getting your teeth straightened and whitened, you know, shit like that. I would rather see you guys invest in yourself. I think that's always going to be a sure bet. If you're ever unsure of what to spend your money on, by the way, if you're sitting there and you're like, how do I get started? How do I spend my money? Fucking spend it on yourself. Like literally spend it on yourself. That will always be a permanent investment that will only go up over time. Mm -hmm. But if you buy, I don't know, a fucking car or something, you know, there's nothing wrong with a car, but that's only going to depreciate over time. But investing in yourself only ever pays off and it's very exponential growth if you pay in if you buy yourself a new haircut all of a sudden at work you might get a promotion or girls will start respect like they'll, they'll think you're more attractive or your friends will go like oh you know cool fucking haircut bro like it it, it pays off in a lot of different areas but yeah mm-hmm. next question that max asked is how linear or exponential was the growth uh really fucking slow because we've been doing this for like three, four years now. So really fucking slow, but then really exponential at the end. Yes, definitely. I would say like it went from like nothing for a really long time, not paying the bills for years. Years of like stress and not sleeping. And we talked about it in the previous video that we did. Yeah. But yeah, but now it was, a big part of it was just giving yourself permission to charge what you're charging and actually ask for it. And I think we were even having a conversation this morning that part of the reason why this month was such a big month was actually because you started telling people how valuable the one-on-one coaching is. Yeah. Rather than the group coaching. And it's just a lot of this has been about giving yourself permission to actually ask for money. Yeah, for sure. And recommend that clients spend a decent amount of money on the one-on-one coaching. And so that's made, made things happen a lot more quickly. Yeah, for sure. And, and and since talking about this, I've had a couple of coaching clients that have said like, oh, what the fuck, Andy? I didn't realize you didn't fully believe in yourself or that you had doubts. And it's like, of course I have doubts. Of course I had insecurities. Of course I have things where I, uh, uh, like, of course I hold back at times. This hasn't just been balls to the wall for the last three or four years of, of like building this up. No, like I, I've said this to so many people. I could have, we could have gotten to this point in a year or two. Yeah. It's taken us about four years. Sure. But that's obviously very easy to say in hindsight. Oh, of course. Of course. But the point in saying that is so that any of you guys, first of all, I don't want you to think that building a business will take you four years. It won't at all. You can do it in one or two. And it, it doesn't have to be as slow growth as we did. I had so many limiting beliefs. I've been poor my entire life, had so much debt all my whole life. You got to understand, guys, I didn't think I was ever going... I didn't think I was allowed to, to get to this. I didn't think I was allowed to earn more than $5,000 a month. Remember how many how long it took us to earn $5,000? It was like three years to earn that yeah, much. Yeah, I remember two years ago, you were talking, we were like, we would do like check-ins or talk about it. And that was the goal, like in 2018, 2019. Yeah. And we would talk about it as this like big lofty thing of like, how incredible would it be? If I could just earn $5,000 a month. Yeah. Which was enough to pay the bills. I thought that might take 10 or 15 years. Like I literally did, I did, and I didn't even think we'd ever get there. How many conversations did we have where I was like, I don't, you know, I know the answer is to just shut the fuck up and keep grinding, but I don't believe we'll ever do this. Like that we had that conversation so many times. So many times, yeah. Yeah. And so you don't even have to believe you're going to make it. Just don't quit. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that for the rest of my life. It doesn't even fucking matter if you believe that you can make it with any of this shit. You don't have to feel like you deserve, you know, I did a call with a guy today, one of my clients today and he was literally talking about you know i just feel like i don't deserve to talk to women and i was like bro i never felt like i deserve to do any of this shit 
Why would you feel like you deserve to do it? You haven't done it before. You have no evidence that you deserve to do it. Mm -hmm. Deserving to do it is bullshit anyway. No one deserves anything. You don't deserve jack shit. Nothing is entitled to you. You do not have any fucking things that you deserve. So just shut the fuck up and keep going. Or just, if you haven't started yet, start. Like, I didn't feel like we deserved any of this. So how linear or exponential was it? Really slow growth for a long time and then exponential in the last probably three months. Which I mean, I guess is the definition of like exponential, like it's slow, 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 yeah, slow, slow, yes. and then it shoots up. So. so it was exponential growth for sure. But only because the moment we decided to actually try and go all in, you know, you, you said it before, I wasn't, I don't like the word pushing, but I wasn't even like encouraging anyone to do coaching. You weren't telling people. Yeah. If you guys go back and watch all the previous videos, the most I would ever do, like, sure, I do the test, the interviews with past coaching clients, but if you watch them, I would never say like, and guys, you got to do coaching too. Like, look how much this guy has changed his life. Half the time it was my fucking coaching clients and I'm really grateful for them. It was them going like, and Andy's not going to say this, but you should buy, buy his coaching because it's amazing. And I would just sit there awkwardly, nervously, like go and watch. Like I'm literally sitting there cringing because I don't know how to fucking, first of all, accept the compliment and say, hey bro, that means a lot. Thank you. Yes, guys, you can sign up for coaching. This is like, I was never, ever saying that in any of the videos. And anytime I would, God, God I had to work up so much courage. And I would, I would have conversations with you before I would do a podcast. Mm -hmm. And I would say, okay, Emmy. I need, uh, you need to keep yeah, me accountable. I'm going to use you for accountability. Mm -hmm. I have to mention coaching in this one. And I can't just pussy out and not do it. And yet I would still pussy out. Or if I do mention it, go back and watch all the times I do mention it. I'm like, oh, and by the way, guys, if you want coaching, you know, you can sign up for that link in the description below. That was me just like blurting it out because I knew that I, you know, I wanted to say it because I was sick of being fucking poor and stressing and not sleeping. And, you know, neither of us fucking sleeping for a lot of the last like three or four years. And so I would push myself. And so we've switched that up in the last three months, but definitely the last month. Mm. Um, this is the first month where I've actually tried and I've actually every person that I've, you know, either has either emailed me to talk about coaching or every person I've sat down with. This is the first time where I've said, yeah, bro, I recommend one on one coaching because I can obviously work with you 50 times more than the group. We will make 50 times the progress. It's the first time I've ever given myself permission to say that. Yeah, because in the past, I always felt like uncomfortable having that. I'm someone that's not very confrontational. It's taken me... It's not me, even confrontation though. It's just like... I was scared of a confrontation. Okay. I was scared that they're going to be like, bro, don't fucking tell me how to spend my money. You fucking can't. I'll kill you. Like, I don't know what I was afraid of. Yeah. But I was slowly working up to the point. I, and I knew this point was coming. And that's another point to make, guys. If you're someone that struggles to, to pull the trigger on something or to have that like killer instinct, one of the guys I just signed up for coaching said his biggest concern is that he's not a go-getter. And I was like, I'm not a fucking go-getter. Like you just think I'm a go-getter, but I'm fucking not. I just grind every single day. I don't quit. That's why I'm still here. That's why we've achieved anything. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say I'm a go-getter. It's only the last like three weeks I've actually tried to be a go-getter with the money. And look what's fucking happened. Last month we earned what? Like $15,000? 10000 maybe? Yeah, I think it was maybe ten, maybe. Yeah, so last month's with ten. We're at 60000 right now. And technically i have a bunch of people who are about to finish paying like they've said can i pay in installments over like two months and i'm like yeah sure so if they pay if you want to count that money which i guess you don't you only count it from when it actually got paid but technically it's like we've probably signed about 70 to eighty thousand dollars worth of people th like this month that's yeah. fucking insane to go from like barely ten thousand to like you know 80,000 depending on how you want to count it let's just be conservative and say 60,000 the 60,000 dollars like that's being paid that's fucking insane we six times six times our money by me just actually fucking trying we six times and guess what now because I've actually fucking tried I get to help all those people or I'm already in the process of helping them all so it's like their life is improved too and I had this conversation, I'm going to do a separate podcast about this. I had this big conversation with someone in the Facebook group today who was saying, I'm worried about talking to girls. I'm worried if that's creepy. And I was like, bro, you're giving them something like you hitting on them and saying, hey, you know, you're really cute. I'm Andy. What are you up to today? Having a conversation and asking for their phone number. You're giving them something. You're giving them a freaking compliment. You're making them feel good about themselves. You're potentially going on a date with them and having a nice time and sharing that experience and being honest with them and all of that shit. Like you're giving yourself and them an opportunity to have a nice time together and you're 
not letting that happen if you don't hit on them. And I could say the same thing. I was not enabling a bunch of people to change their lives because I was just too timid to say like, bro, let's do coaching. Yeah. Like I had so many people that would get on the call and I would just kind of be timid and they would eventually go like, eh. like I'm kind of on the fence. And I'd be like, well, man, it's your money. Like it's your life, do whatever you want. Because I was too scared to say like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Do you want to change your life or not? What the fuck are you doing? Let's do it. And so since I've changed that and actually given a shit, yeah, that's why we've had the exponential growth. So that should be a lesson to you guys to, to do what I talk about all the time. It's taken me a while to do. Go all in. Like, don't fuck around with this shit. Go all in. Whether that's girls, money, friends, body, whatever it is, just go all in. Did you want to add anything? Uh, <laughs> um, on what you were saying before, I think a lot of it does come down to like a self-esteem thing. Like yep. the guy that's like, I... I'm worried I'm going to waste girls' time. It's that, uh -huh. like, it's accepting that you have something to offer yep. and that you are, like, you have value mm -hmm. and nobody's going to know that until you tell them or show them. Yep. So it is. It's, like, giving yourself permission to do so, like you did. Yeah, I had to give myself permission. And by the way, guys, I had to give myself permission to hit on girls, to, to have threesomes, all of that. I had to give myself permission. And you don't even have to necessarily, like, believe that permission. And what I mean by that is you can be sitting there going, like, I, I'm i going to say I deserve to do this, but I don't really. It doesn't fucking matter. Just say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to try and see what happens. Next question is how much... So again, from Max, how much did your business coach help you achieve this? As in help you achieve the $50,000 a month goal? Um, so when I talk about business coach, he's not really my coach. Like, It's more that I have a mentor. So I'll put him up on the screen. When I say mentor, it's more a guy that I've learned a lot from. So Dan Henry, this guy. Fucking legend. I did a seminar with him called the Raise Your Prices Challenge. And the point of this is like a three day seminar. And the point of the seminar was obviously, as the title implies, to raise your prices. And I think at the time we were charging nine hundred and ninety seven dollars for my coaching. Yep. That was for my one on one coaching. I think mm -hmm. that was for like, you know, three, three months. Calls. of Yeah. Spread across three months. So three months of, of coaching. And in the challenge, he basically said to all of us, raise your fucking prices. And so at the very start, actually the, a couple of days before we even started the seminar, I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm terrified to do this. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to raise my prices to $2,000. And I was convinced no one was going to pay. They're going to say this is expensive. This is for the one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. Mm. A guy stand up immediately. And I was like, what the fuck? And so I remember, you know, we go to the first day of the thing and I say to the Dan Henry guy, holy shit, man, like your shit works. Like I just raised my price and we just signed someone. Like someone just said, yes, that's amazing. I'd love to. And I was like, what the fuck? And he said like, raise your prices again. What are you doing? Like raise your prices. So I think we put it up to 10 grand at that point. I thought it was five. Maybe it was five, but we went pretty quickly to 10. Yeah, it was shortly after. <clears throat> like yeah. maybe a few weeks after. Okay, so let's say we went to $5,000 and we signed someone at that as well. And I was like, oh my God, we've just gone from like one to $5,000. And then shortly after that, we put it up to 10 and we closed... I think I'm not going to say who, but you can probably remember who the guy that had his own business and shit. And he was yep. like pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that guy, like a couple weeks later. So this guy, Dan Henry, absolutely fucking helped with that. So it's not that I'm doing coaching with him right now, but he's absolutely helped with that. The coach that I do have, that's probably, I mean, I got two coaches right now. My spiritual coach is probably the biggest help. I've done like 10 sessions with him over the months. I just hit him up whenever I feel like a session. He's fucking amazing. Half of my philosophies that I teach you guys come from him. Books like Letting Go, that's, he recommended that to me. Um, he doesn't have a website, but if any of you want a session with him, I can like link you up. He's about roughly like in US dollars, it would be about 300 US dollars for a session. Absolutely worth it. But yeah, you will have to get in contact with him. He doesn't have a website. I'll, I'll push him to set up a website at some point. And then my other coach is my bodybuilding coach. who's just amazing with my mental health. He's a fucking God. In terms of coaches that you have, you have a woman that you're using for your binge eating. Yep. And she's amazing. I have a dietitian that I check in with yep. every now and then. That one's more like an on a one-off basis. We see the same like spiritual coach. I'll mm -hmm. check in with him for sessions. And then I also see just like a traditional psychologist as well. Yeah. Yeah. To talk through other stuff. Yeah. You've got bits and pieces. And I guess the question, it doesn't quite say this, but I get the feeling what this question is asking is like, how will a coach help? And what you'll find most coaches do, and my coaching is basically exactly the same. Every coach, all the thing they're doing is giving you permission. That's really it. 
the the yes they will motivate you yes they will encourage you yes they will sometimes or a lot of the time give you actionable advice that will save you time and effort and all that shit but more than anything the thing they do is they tell you yes your goals are possible yes you can do that goal like there's nothing wrong with you you're not special hurry up and do it that's what every coach does that's almost all they do yeah that and i think a bit of accountability as well sure 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 like but that's all like the, that feels like the cherry on top to me really the main sure. heart of what they give you is like yes you can do this thing hurry up and do it sure. so that's what dan henry gave me that's what all my other coaches give me it's what your coaches give you that's what i give to my coaching clients mm -hmm. so the next thing next question tied onto that is was it more practical advice or more that he pushed you to aim high oh good question yeah so we just answered that really it was more that he pushed me to aim high yeah like the whole point and his whole thing Guys, go and watch his channel, Dan Henry. His shit, if any of you are starting a business or thinking about it, hell, even if you're just, you know, getting girls and that, if you're at that stage, his whole thing is raise your prices, aim higher, set higher goals, set lofty goals, dream big. That's his fucking motivational thing. Mm. It's really, and he does it in such a way where he's basically like, why the hell are you charging that low? That's his thing. It's the same thing I do with a lot of my coaching clients where they'll come to me and be like, I want to lose my virginity by the end of the year. And I'm like, bro, what the fuck? You're going to lose it in the next two weeks. End of the year. What the fuck are you talking about? Let's lose it next week. Like, what are you talking about? So that's what most coaches will give you. It's the aiming high. But yes, he did give some practical advice as well. But I didn't need any practical advice. We didn't need any practical advice. It was yeah. just like, raise your fucking prices. And I think at the end of the day, for most big goals, I think maybe what like losing weight is a really good one or like getting in shape. Like, if you ask most people, they know that you need to not eat like a fat fuck and <laughs> go to the gym. Like that's, it's nothing revolutionary. It's not groundbreaking. But yeah. what a coach is going to tell you is like, if you haven't looked great your whole life, they would be like, no, you can do it. Like anyone can do yeah. it. Like you've just got to go do it. Do what you know you need to do. It's very rarely like a profound step or like some magical trick that's going to get you exactly what you want. I mean, you do get plenty of those. To be fair, you do get plenty of those. Sure. Like my spiritual coach, he's given me a ton of those epiphanies. Sure. But they're more like philosophies rather than like yeah, actual sure. like steps that you need to take. Sure, sure. And it all, they all tie into like, yes, you have permission to do this. Guys, if you watch a lot of my content, probably 50% of what I say to you is like, you can do it too. And then the other 50%, sure, it's actionable steps, but at least 50% of it is like, you can do this too. Hmm. All right, let's get into the YouTube comments. So we posted on YouTube, a bunch of people gave some like questions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. JV12 says, hey, Andy, hi, JV12. I would love to hear your thoughts on binge eating. Well, I don't binge eat, brother. So what do you want to hear my thoughts for? You Although kind I've, of do. Yeah, I've binge eaten quite a few times. Okay, so I'm, I've just discovered I'm a binge eater, JV12. So we're going to go through this together, brother. I know Imogen has struggled with it. So I would like to hear your input on the topic. Thank you. Well, you want to hear my input or her, her input, brother? Well, it's yours. You can answer this question. To be fair, you put out the ask me anything, so... Yeah, but I said you can ask me, so you can ask... Just give, like, a short answer. I feel like we could... Let's do a separate video on your binge eating. Sure. Because there's this top bro. We could talk about this shit for, like... And I'm not calling you bro, but I'm calling him bro. I'm aware. I do call you bro you sometimes, bro, and you get bro. real... Fu You're like, don't, don't call me bro, I'm a girl. And I'm like, okay, bro, sorry about that, bro. Okay, like, of all the things you call me, bro's not... I call you anything unpleasant. I can come up with that I yeah. think will make you roll your eyes. And then I just I hone in on that. I'm like, that's the thing I call her now for the next two weeks until yeah. I figure out the next thing to no call No one you. would ever guess what it would be because it's so... I got some creative fucking odd. names. I call you Egg for a long time. I called you... you okay. I call you Nightmare Fuel. I called you Krusty Demon. In the comments. Cupcake Face. I will, I will go in and read them. Who looks more like an Egg? Is it Andy? I, look, I'm the egg, yeah. Is it Andy with it's the called, bald head? It's called projection. I call you an egg because I'm projecting. I, it's like bullying in school. If I call you an egg before you call me an egg, you can't call me an egg. You're an egg. I love you so fucking much. Now, answer the goddamn question shortly, and then we'll do a separate big video on it. Well, it's an interesting way to ask a question. Like, what are your thoughts it's on binge eating? It's a dog shit question. So, yeah, your, your, <laughs> know, your thoughts on binge eating are like... a lot of thoughts about I'd it. I, I, don't, I don't like binge eating. I don't love it. There you go. That's my That's, thoughts on binge yeah. eating. Wouldn't recommend. Don't recommend. Would, would not recommend. Zero out of five stars. Wouldn't go back again. Just give them a little bit. Yeah. It's something you're still working on. There you go. It is. No, it is. It's something that I'm still working on. And I think a lot of what has improved my like stuff is honestly like with my eating has been being like a happier person, like having mm. more things going on in my life 
that mean it's like there's more stuff to focus on. For sure. Which has meant that I've spent less time thinking about food. Because if I think back, like the times where I have wanted to binge eat the most have been times where my life also isn't great. Because when I'm yeah. happy and doing great and lots of great things are going on, I'm less inclined to eat. Like obviously mm. not. that's not a perfect fix, mm. but it goes a long way to help. And then like another big thing has just been letting a lot of people know having like accountability partners, talking mm-hmm. to you, Andy, about it, mm-hmm. having the coach, something, just having people to talk to about it so it doesn't feel like I'm in this weird bubble of binge eating and wanting yeah. to eat has also helped a lot. Yep. Some books that help. Read Loving What Is by Byron Katie. Loving What Is by Byron Katie. Mm-hmm. Read Letting Go by David Hawkins. Both of those are pretty fucking good. The Greatest Secret by Rhonda Byrne. That's yeah. pretty decent. And for one that's specifically on eating um, brain over binge, it's brain probably over been binge. Yep. my favorite book on that thus far. And it actually is very in line with all of the books that you just recommended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so key points there. Have a busy life or have some goals and things that you're working on, things that, that entertain you and take up your time. So that could be friends, hobbies, could be girls, could be like literally anything. Uh, as long as you're passionate about it and you care. Work on your mental health, obviously. Read all the books that we just recommended. What else did you say? Get someone in your corner, like some sort of coach. There are so many like experts who work on binge eating and stuff like that. There's so many people that I can recommend or that Emmy can recommend to you. And tell as many people as you can. Oh, actually, and one more. Be nice to yourself. Yeah, be fucking nice. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, no, binge eating is the weird one. So people, I guess porn is pretty similar. People who have a porn addiction tend to shame and guilt themselves afterwards. Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? But binge eating is the big one because binge eaters will like look in the mirror and JV12, if you're doing this, like I would stop doing this immediately. A lot of binge eaters will look in the mirror and go, I'm fucking disgusting. I'm gross. I'm fucking like no one would ever want me. And then what do you do to fix those feelings that you've just now made yourself feel? You go, well, I'm going to go comfort eat. And so it's like this vicious cycle, which Mm -hmm. doesn't happen as often with almost anyone else. Or almost any other addiction. Like if you have a video game addiction, you don't look in the mirror and go, I'm fucking disgusting because I play video games. I'm just disgusting. No one would ever want me. No. Like you have a general sense of like, yes, I'm addicted. Yes, I'm wasting time. Yes, I'm not happy. Like you do beat yourself up, of course. But you don't look in the fucking mirror and say horrible shit to yourself. That seems to be like a binge eating or a bulimia or a body dysmorphia thing. Because you are literally looking at your body going, this is fucking disgusting. So cut that out immediately. And what I would recommend instead is search my channel for mirror therapy and do some mirror therapy, which is where you look into your own eyes in the mirror and say, I love you. If you can't fucking do that, keep trying. You will eventually get it. You can start with, I like you or you're decent or you're okay. Work up to being able to say, I love you every single night in the mirror. I do this. I've done this for like nine months at this point. I haven't missed a day. You do this. Mm -hmm. And the times when you stop doing this, because there's been times you have broken the habit And then guess what? It builds up and you go, you know, two weeks later, you binge eat and you go, oh, how did this happen? And I say, well, have you been nice to yourself for the last two weeks? And you go, no, I've kind of been saying horrible shit to myself. Generally speaking, there's a correlation. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm not in a good mood, when I'm my self-talk is really bad, that's when I'm more inclined to eat. Yeah, for sure. So be fucking nice to yourself, JV12. Mm -hmm. Uh, On top of that, come up with a list of 50 things about yourself that are likable. Um. I, I did a, I think it was a podcast. So you might have to search my Spotify. It was a recent podcast and it was called, no, 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 no. It was on YouTube and it was called, just search YouTube on my channel for like 50 things that are likable. And it's an exercise I recommend everyone does. You write down 50 things about yourself that are likable. Yeah, just start really working on that mental health and learning to like yourself. Because with binge eating, it is one of those things where you do treat yourself like evilly. Mm. And another way to look at that is, Whenever you're having negative thoughts in your head, like, man, I'm I'm always going to be disgusting. No one will like me. I need to stop eating. I'm a fat pig. Like, my life sucks. Anytime you're having those negative thoughts, think about, would I say this sentence, this thought, would I say this to my best friend? Like, would I any other human being. Yeah, any other fucking human being, but especially my best friend. Mm. Would I look them in their eyes and say, you're disgusting? Or would I say, you're never going to find love? Or would I say, you don't deserve happiness? No, you wouldn't fucking say that. You'd have to be a sociopath to say, even a sociopath wouldn't say that because they know I'll eventually get punched in the face if I go around saying that to people. So if you wouldn't say it to someone else, don't say it to yourself. Or if that voice starts saying it, because sometimes we don't have control over the, the thoughts in our head, counter it with a positive thought. 
So if your your brain goes, I'm fucking disgusting, say, no, I'm fucking not. Shut your fucking mouth. I'm not disgusting. I'm working on myself. At least I'm trying. There are people out there that have quit, that binge eat themselves to death. Hey, at least I've realized that this is something I want to work on. Hey, full credit to me. So try and say a positive statement for every negative thought that comes in your head. Keep that habit up. Eventually, you get to a point where there's more positives than negatives. And then congratulations, you're an optimistic person. That's how I got out of my own depression. Hmm. B-O-F, boff, I guess, says... What do you think about the whole idea of chase the money and then the women will come? It's gay. I'm 22 and I work a full-time job. I'm studying in university. My boy is busy over here and I go to the gym. Yeah, super busy. I don't have the time to do anything fun. Well, that's bullshit. So that is such a fucking limiting belief right there. I don't have the time to do anything fun. So we'll rewrite that as I am going to tell myself the story that I don't have time to do anything fun. And I don't know if I should push. Was there more to this question that got cut off or was that it? I think that was it. Okay, I'll just say that's the full question. So first thing, I just jumped on you there, but like, don't ever tell yourself lies. And I know that they sound truthful when you say, I don't have the time to do anything fun. It's like, if I put a gun to your head right now and told you that today you need to do anything fun, are you going to die or are you going to say, I'm going to do something fun? The answer is obviously, well, okay, well, fine. If you put a gun to my head, yes, I would find something fun to do. Okay, so then the correct statement is right now, I'm not prioritizing fun. And that's perfectly fine. I'm not even telling you to prioritize fun. You can do whatever the hell you want. It sounds like gym, work, and university are your higher priorities. That, bro, that's perfectly reasonable. It sounds like you're pretty busy. Just don't tell yourself a lie of like, I don't have time to do anything fun. The correct statement is right now, I'm not prioritizing fun. And so then the answer can be, okay, am I happy with that? If so, that's fine. But then I don't need to tell myself that I'm not prioritizing anything fun. I can just let it go and say, yeah, I'll do some fun stuff once I'm less busy. And then you can let it go. You're not sitting there feeling guilty for not doing fun things, which is obviously what you're feeling or you wouldn't have written that statement. Or you can do the opposite and say, okay, look, fun is not my priority, but I can probably fit in 15 minutes of fun twice a week. Mm. Everyone can do that. Mm -hmm. literally everyone can do that or you know what okay look on sunday you know i'm going to be studying my for my exams but i can probably take like a 20 minute break and, and go for a walk or i can go hit on girls or something like that like you know i got time for some fun so just don't tell yourself lies i know that doesn't answer your question at all but that's a very important point i want to make to answer your actual question people often everyone does this basically there's like an art and a skill to how to ask a good question and most people I'm, I, I'm at a point where I'm very good at figuring out what the actual question is, but you haven't actually asked the question. Your real question is not, should I chase the money and then the woman will come? Your real question is, right now I prioritize my job, my university and the gym. Can you please just give me permission to chase girls after I've done these things? The answer is like, sure, dude, it's your life. Do whatever you want. Like that's, that's the answer to your question. I, I want you to think in your mind, and this applies to everybody listening, rather than think, what is the correct order of my life? It's like, bro, how the fuck am I going to know? How am I, Andy, going to know what the correct order for your life is? How are you even going to know what the correct order for your life is? Yeah, all you can do is just try something and yes. see if it works. Or just pick something and you make it work. Like, go with it, yes. commit to it, and make it work. Yes. And I think this question is kind of asking, like, if I keep at my job and university and basically make some money by doing this, is that going to have women attracted to me? The answer is obviously like slightly, but not as not the way you're thinking. No, you're going to still need to pursue women. That's going to yeah, still sure. have to yes. be a goal yes. to actually yes. get women. Yes. You're not, women aren't going to. Women don't go, look at this rich guy who, who finished his university degree and he goes to the gym. And Let me just sit on that face. Like, Yeah, no. until you're like multi-millionaire. Like. Even then, yeah, you have to get to a ridiculous point, which you're probably not going to get to. And even if you're a multi-millionaire, they don't flock to you. You have to be like famous as well. Now, yep. does having money and having a career and having, you know, a great body, well, especially the body one, does that help? Of course, of course. The point we're making is you still need to pull the trigger. So you will still need to talk to women. You will still need to set up a Tinder account and make the moves and say, hey, let's grab a drink together. Like you still have to do that. Yeah. Yes, it's easier the more you build yourself up. And I think that's kind of the question he's asking. Yeah. But it's not a ca it's not a complete fix all. No. And like, like you've said before, like you, when you started getting laid you did not have money i was poor as fuck yep. yeah 
But again, this guy's already started with this stuff. So BOF, BOF, if you were asking this question and you hadn't taken any action whatsoever, like if you weren't in university, if you didn't have a full-time job, and if you didn't go to the gym and you said, which should I pick first, money or women? I'd say, bro, just get your women life sorted. But you are, it sounds like already in the process of doing the money shit. And so what I would recommend is finish your, finish your studies, go and get your career and don't sit there until you're fucking 25 but focus the next year mostly on your university and getting a decent career if that's what you want to do and spend a little bit of time during that doing girl shit like don't wait entirely mm -hmm. go out on the weekends that's why i said you know you're kind of lying to yourself when you say you don't have any time even if you can spend one hour a week talking to girls or like five minutes here five minutes there just start talking to some girls start taking some pictures start working on your body start the process don't wait but it's completely fine if you make the priority your university and your career just don't wait till you're like 25 or 27 or 30 or something because then you'll go like why did i wait so long yeah but it's okay to have this shit as your priority and then once you finish your university okay look at all the free time i have now i'm gonna go talk to girls so yep. yeah the order doesn't matter too much i do recommend that most people do women first but you're already in the process of doing the you know university stuff which is why i said your actual question that you haven't written that you want to ask me but you didn't ask is is what i'm doing okay and it's like yes you're fine as long as you're making progress every day guys the only thing that matters every day rather than waking up and saying what should i be working on it's like am i making progress in any area of my life if the answer is yes good every single day wake up that's it that's all that matters am i moving forward in some capacity yes is my body looking better am i making more friends am i cooler Am I making more money? Am I getting better with girls? Am I going to like any of those things? Good. You you're wearing a very ridiculous hat. Everybody likes my hat. <laughs> Can you just take me seriously when I wear this hat? I'm gonna wear this hat during sex. <laughs> so Matthias Gratz, I thought that said Mardi Gras for a second. Matthias Gratz. Hey Andy, hope you're having a great day. Well, it's six forty one p.m. my friend, so no, it, I'm having a great night, and you're a piece of shit for not knowing that. My name is Matthias. I'm <laughs> he's 20 from Argentina. And he's just been insulted by the Buenos person Aires. whose YouTube channel he likes to watch from Buenos Aires. Hey, bro, my sister went to Buenos Aires. She was in Argentina for a year. Um, when she was like 17, she went for like language exchange. She lived there for like a year and a half. And she lived in like Buenos Aires. No, she didn't live there. She went there for a while. I feel like this is the perfect moment for a like cool story, bro. Shut the fuck. This is a cool story. This guy lives in this country and he's going to be very excited to know my sister was there. And I can't remember where she lived. She lived in a small city and she fucking loved it, man. She brought me that drink that's called like Mate or Mate, whatever. M-A-T-E. You know that drink? You know that thing I'm talking about? It's that drink. I like that shit. Can't get it here though. She brought us a big fucking two kilogram bag of that. So he says, I want to ask you for advice on how can I start to take action and stop setting excuses in my sexual life? My goal for this year was to get laid at least once or meet girls and attract them. Kind of going to skip over some of this here because I don't think we need to read it mm -hmm. out. I'm just going to read it real quick. So basically this guy, like when it comes, he's, you know, he says, I'm lean, I'm short. I consider myself a decent guy. When it comes to talking to girls and expressing my intentions or creating a Tinder account, my heart rate starts to escalate quickly and I get anxious and nervous. Welcome to the club, motherfucker. This is all of us. How do you think... Motherfucker, how do you think I feel sitting down for the first time and saying to someone, hey, my coaching is $10,000 fucking dollars. You want to talk about heart rate exploding, bro. Fuck. Mm. I'm overwhelmed. And I, I felt all the stuff you're talking about as well. Like when I first set up my Tinder account, I'm freaking the fuck out. How do you think I felt when I first started doing BDSM stuff on Tinder? I thought the police were going to come arrest me. That. You were scared I to meet me. Yeah. Girls yeah, when well. you when you set up your Tinder for us yeah. to meet girls together, you almost that died. That was scary. Yeah, you I didn't like that panic attacks yeah this this stuff is very normal my friend very normal yep. i'm overwhelmed by the number of different content about game that is out there at the moment yeah lots of guys say this they're like who should i listen to andy should i listen to you or someone else and i'm like i don't give a fuck just get started i don't give a fuck who you talk who you listen to just do something yes i feel stuck with zero progress in my sexuality what a story you're telling yourself my friend i feel stuck with zero progress how have you made zero progress you've been watching my content I'm assuming, like, you, I just started the gym. How is that zero progress? I don't understand how that's zero progress. You've literally started. Okay, I think what he actually means is I've had zero results with women so far. Yeah, because you're only just early on in the game, bro. Yes. 
only early on in this shit. Give yourself some credit. Don't be so hard on yourself. I want to focus on one thing at a time to improve my sexual life. Yep, that's the way to do it. Um, you can focus on like one or two things, but like, sure, I know what you mean. What would you recommend to a newbie? I've been doing this for about six months. Thanks in advance and greetings from Argentina. AR. He did his little AR flag, but it didn't show up. Oh. Okay, so, 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 so. Yeah, what you're feeling is completely normal. Please don't tell yourself like I'm stuck or this is hard or I'm, I'm making excuses. You said, how do I start to take action? It's like you just take action. So don't insert an extra step. What I mean by that is don't come to me and say, hey, can you tell me how to start act taking action? It's like, why do we need to do that step? You just need to go outside and take action. Now, if you say to me, I can't go outside and talk to girls because I'm too scared. That's okay. Do the approach anxiety program that's on the Good Looking Loser website, the same approach anxiety program that I did. Mm -hmm. If you were to say, I can't do that, that's okay. Go outside every single day. Just go outside for 30 minutes and just walk around looking at people. Do that for a week. Then go outside and just say hello to one person every day. Just hello. Do that for a week. Then go outside every day and just go up to people and say, hi, how's your day going? Can you please tell me where the grocery store is? Do that. And then at that point, you can do the approach anxiety program. So whenever you feel yourself, guys, this applies to all of you. Whenever you feel yourself telling yourself stories of like, I'm stuck. I'm making excuses. I can't do this. I'm anxious. Break it down. If what you're trying to do is too scary for you, just break it down. Do something smaller. Do a little baby step. If that baby step is too scary, do something even smaller. Don't be too you know, arrogant, like, like humble yourself. If you're sitting there going like, oh, but like, I want to do a big, you know, take a big leap forward. I don't want to just go outside and say hello to someone. It's like, don't be too arrogant. That's you being too arrogant. Just humble yourself. Say, okay, right now I can't talk to girls. What can I do? Well, I can walk around outside. Okay. Let me do that. And if you can't do that, okay, well, I can walk to my window and look outside and think about going outside, do that for a week. And then you'll work up the courage to go outside. These are the things I had to do when I was depressed. I couldn't go outside. I had to work up the courage to fucking go outside, let alone to then talk to people, let alone to go to a counselor, let alone to fix my depression and all that other shit. Start really small. So Matthias, start really fucking small with it, with Tinder. You know, you're saying creating a Tinder account makes my heart rate start to escalate and I get anxious and nervous. Okay. So your only goal is to set up a Tinder account and don't put any pictures on it. You don't have to put any pictures on it. Just set up a Tinder account. Then you can put your phone away, have a freak out, calm yourself down, meditate, go to bed, feel better. And then the next day, okay, I just have to put one picture on my Tinder account. Do that. And then put, you know, one picture every day until you have a profile. Okay, the next day I have to write a bio. And then the next day, maybe I have to start swiping on some girls mm -hmm. and slowly build up. Like, don't try and do it all at once. If you're someone that is getting a bit anxious and nervous, that's okay. There is always something you can do even if that thing seems really, really, really small, congratulations, bro. That's better than zero. I never want you to do zero. So as long as you do something, I'll be super fucking happy. That's all you have to do. Just anything. So yeah, start with that. So probably the approach anxiety program for talking to girls in person and then for Tinder, just set up your Tinder account. And if you're struggling with that, just set it up and then put one picture on there per day. Mm -hmm. Anything to add? And with the, I know you've already mentioned it with like not knowing who to listen to. Mm, mm -hmm. You basically said just like, just pick someone. I think it is that case of like, you can, uh, most advice will work. You yep. just need to pick it and go with it and stick yep. to it and not kind of keep changing plans or not continuing to like do different things. It's kind of like with diet, just cause it's an easy example. You can, there's a million ways to diet you can do. Yeah. If it fits your macros, you can count calories, you can do intuitive eating, you can do keto, you can do like, mm -hmm. there's infinite diets you can try. And most of them will work if yep. you stick with them. Yep. Just like with getting women, most things will work as long as you just keep mm -hmm. consistent and keep going at it. You just pick something, go with it and stick to it. Yeah, pick with it. If, if you keep sitting there going like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Like, what should I do? Just pick someone. If you want to pick me, just do everything I say. Yes, I'm not perfect. Yes, I will make some mistakes. Yes, other people might explain certain topics better than me. Of course, like I'm a human. But just pick me. It's it's good enough. It will get you exactly where you need to be. Just follow my freaking Tinder guide. Do everything that's in the Tinder guide and you will get laid like fucking crazy. Yeah, because 
what isn't going to work is reading a hundred different people's and getting overwhelmed uh, yeah. and doing and nothing. Do nothing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So just do anything that's better than nothing. If you want to pick my stuff, just pick my Tinder guide completely free. Use that. You don't have to pay me a cent. Just use that damn thing. It's huge. It tells you everything. I talk about self improvement, Tinder, everything. Just use that. Mm-hmm. Rodrigo M. Andy, my inspiration. Great to see your content growing. Uh, in one of your podcasts and the threesome guide. You are with two OnlyFans models. How do you hook up with OnlyFans models? Do you have a way of contacting them? Yeah, so for full disclosure, and we said that on that podcast, one of them wasn't an OnlyFans model at the time. At the time, but doing that podcast with us, she immediately set up an OnlyFans. And so that's why I put interview with two OnlyFans models, because by the time I released it, she was technically. I'm pretty sure we explained that in the actual podcast, but I want to make that clear. Um, and the other thing I'll make clear is it's not like it's it's not like we went onto OnlyFans and said like, hey, let's get some OnlyFans models. It just happened that they were doing OnlyFans or one of them was doing OnlyFans and then the other girl was her friend and I said like, hey, do you have any... F-? No, no, no. We met them both and they happened to be friends. Whatever. It, we yes. explained it all in the fucking podcast. But it's not like we went out and found OnlyFans girls. I'll make mm-hmm. that really clear. Mm-hmm. It's more that they just happened to do OnlyFans. Yep. Now, because I think the question you're asking, Rodrigo, is like, how would I meet some girls on OnlyFans and then meet up with them in person. The answer to this question is like, it's going to be an answer to a similar question we're going to ask next. Like a a guy asked a similar question about how to get out of the friend zone. And the answer that I'm going to give to both of these questions is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to say, you can try, like shoot your shot, but then don't be butthurt if it doesn't work. So you got to remember with OnlyFans girls, if you look at their OnlyFans accounts, like if you could log in, which, you know, I have, logged into plenty of, you know, like three OnlyFans accounts now from girls that have shown us, there's like a lot of messages. You have to understand there's a lot of messages there. I don't And you're probably not standing out. Yeah. You could, now you could, and that, here's the answer that I'm going to give you. I don't think it's personally the best use of your time. Yes. But who who am I to tell you what the hell is the best use of your time? So if it is something that you want to pursue, go for it. You will need to run your own experiment. You'll need to figure it out yourself. I would probably just recommend you do similar to what I say with, you know, Tinder or BDSM or any of that shit. Just come up with something that you say to them and just just talk like you would on Tinder. Yep. Like, yo, hey, you're really cute. You know, I'm Rodrigo. What are you up to? Blah, blah, blah. Just talk to her like a normal guy. Talk like two or three messages and then be like, yo, you seem cool. We should grab a drink sometime, blah, blah, blah. Just don't be butthurt. You have to understand the vast majority of guys that message her go like, oh my God, can I please meet you? I'd give anything Mm -hmm. to meet you. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not saying it won't work. I don't know. I've never tried. If you do it enough, it'll work. Sure. Everything works if you play the numbers game. I just want to make it clear. It's not something I've done. Yeah, and you are playing the hard game of trying to stand out from hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of guys. Yeah, who are all asking the exact same thing. I think you'd probably honestly be better. A lot of them have their Instagram in their bio on on OnlyFans. You'd probably be better better hitting them up on Instagram. If you're going to do that, make sure you have decent pictures on your Instagram. There are plenty of guides out there on Instagram. I might do one at some point, but it's not something I've pursued much myself. So... You know, I'd have to wait till I got laid a few times from it, but have some decent pictures and just hit her up on Instagram. That's probably an easier way. But yeah, I want to make that super clear, mate. We didn't meet them through OnlyFans. Yeah, and that, or we didn't necessarily even go out seeking girls Yeah, doing OnlyFans at that point in time. Yeah. It, now, if you, for some reason, if OnlyFans girls was a fetish of yours, you can do that. What I would do is just on Tinder, any girls that you match with, every single girl that you match with, this is something we've done. Um, you just mentioned that you, so it works for us. I don't know if it'll work for you if you're not a photographer, but we just mentioned, by the way, we do photography. And if you're on OnlyFans, we would happily shoot some content for you. Do not use the word OnlyFans. Don't fucking say the word OnlyFans. You will immediately get banned. Like I'm talking like that on every platform, hinge, all of that. You'll just get banned immediately. So don't say OnlyFans. Use the, the abbreviation OF for OnlyFans, obviously. So that's something that we've, like, we still do that. Because our message that we send, we say basically, you know, we're offering BDSM, we'll teach you that, threesome experience so you can, you know, fool around with Imogen. And w- I'm a photographer as well, so we'll shoot content if you have an OnlyFans, if you have an OF. And a lot of them, or a decent amount of girls go, oh, actually, I do have an OF, that would be great. And so that's how we've hooked up with some girls that do have an OnlyFans. One of the girls we're seeing right now, 
we helped her set up her OnlyFans actually. And we're doing like content for it. Mm-hmm. We're splitting some of the income with her. We'll talk about that at a different stage. We've I've hinted at that, but I want to make wait till we're actually a little further along with that before we talk about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a way you could, but I get the feeling your question is, if I like an OnlyFans model, how would I hook up with them? And the answer is like you're gonna have to figure out that one yourself. But you know, it's just a numbers game. But don't be disappointed if you if it doesn't work out. Yep. I just phrase it like that, and that's not me telling you it won't work out. I don't know. AM, what do you do when you are in the friend zone? So this is the question we hinted at. Even if you hit on other girls and even sleep with them, you're thinking about the girl you love despite the other girls being more attractive. Okay, the first thing I would say to you, AM, is is that true? Is what true? The statement you are ju- you have just said, you've said it as if it's like a fundamental truth. Like it's it's absolutely true and it can never be changed. You know, even if I hit on other girls and sleep with them, I'm thinking about the girl I love. That's a story you're telling yourself. You're buying into this romantic fairy tale that you keep telling yourself. And every day you wake up and tell yourself this story. I hit on other girls and I sleep with them and I can't forget this one I love. You have to understand. I know it's not going to feel like this, but you have to understand that's a story you keep telling yourself. Now, I'm not saying you don't love her. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying you are telling yourself this story. You could tell yourself a different story. I'm hitting on other girls and sleeping with them and I'm going to let this other girl go. You could tell yourself that story. Or I'm going to focus on the other girls and give to them and really be involved with them and have a great time. And I'm not going to worry about this other girl. If she likes me, she does. If she doesn't, she doesn't. That's okay. That's a story you could tell. You could tell yourself the story of I'm going to build an amazing, busy life. I'm going to go out with all my fucking friends and I'm going to have hobbies and goals and I'm going to move past her. Even if it takes a long time, even if it hurts, even if I don't want to do it, I'm going to do that. That's a story you could tell yourself. But you have to understand you're telling yourself the story over and over and over again, probably a hundred times a day. Oh my God, I love her so much. Why can't I be with her? I wish I could have her. You're telling yourself that story. I will add to the idea of stories because I know if you're hearing it for the first time, it can seem a bit esoteric. So... When, like, obviously, as Andy said, if you're telling yourself, like, you're in love with this girl again and again and again, that's become really, really solid in your mind. It feels like the truth. And and I'm not saying it's not true. I'm not saying you don't love her. But I'm saying you keep repeating it to yourself. You're you're focusing on it. Maybe we'd say it like that. You're obsessing over the fact that you love her. Instead of saying, yeah, I love her, but it's okay. And it's going to feel true. But if... And so with the alternate stories, like the ones that Andy suggested, like I'm, I'm going to go over this person, I'm, I'm going to build my own amazing life. When you first say that to yourself, that's probably not going to feel true. It's going to feel ridiculous and stupid. You're and probably it's going, going to feel fight like it. you're lying to yourself. Yep. But what you're going to need to do, as Andy said, you've repeated the first story that you love her a thousand times, 10,000 times. You're going to have to keep telling yourself that same thought of, I'm not into her or I'm going to build my own amazing life. You don't have to say I'm not into her, but you have to say there's other women. There's plenty more fish in the sea. Whatever the alternate story is, you're going to need to tell yourself that again and again and again and again for that to then feel true. Yes. Yes. You've basically talked... You you haven't done it on purpose, so I'm I'm not telling you that you've done this on purpose. I hope that's clear. Your brain has said a million times, I love her so much. She's perfect for me. I wish I could get with her. I wish I could escape the friend zone. Your brain has said that to you a million times to the point where it f- it's all you can think about. And so it's time for you to start telling yourself some different stories and they won't feel true at first. They won't. You know, like Amy said, you could say the story of like, I'm going to build an amazing life. I don't need this woman. That's a story you can tell yourself. I don't need her. I want her. I love her, but I don't need her. I can be happy without her. You can tell yourself that story and you might need to say that a thousand times. And every time you might go like, no, that's wrong. Trust me. Say it anyway. You have to keep repeating it enough times that your brain starts to believe it. And your brain, it, it'll be a slow process, but eventually your brain will say, you know what, maybe maybe my life is good enough without her. Yeah, I would like her. I love her. But like, I don't have to be sad without her. I'm allowed to be happy even if I don't have her. I'm allowed to go and have a good time with other women even if I love this woman. I'm allowed to go and hang out with my friends and not think about this woman. You might have to repeat that 10,000 times, but that is how you escape the friend zone. The second part of your question is, should I tell her the direct truth, even if I'm risking a good friendship? Bro, what good friendship? Dog, how is this a good fucking friendship? I've been yelled at him at you. I'm not yelling at you. I'm yelling. Like, bro, how is this a good friendship? This sounds like torture. Do your friend, is a good friendship based on torture? 
the fuck are you talking about good friendship bro this is a shit friendship nothing against her she might be the loveliest person in the entire universe i don't think she's done anything wrong but i don't know i don't i doubt she's done anything wrong you haven't done anything wrong but this is not a good friendship bro a good friendship is like you both are on the same playing field you both know what each other want you're both giving this is a a, a friendship if we can even call it that where you want something that she isn't giving you that's called unhappiness that's called suffering that's called misery that's called you've talked yourself into a position or you've you've gotten into a position where you're not happy you're literally sleeping with other girls and all you can think about is this girl how's that a friendship do you sit there with your male friends and be like i wish i could be with him i wish he would love me that's not a met that's not a friendship you'd be like this is weird like either i'm gonna get with this dude or i'm not you're doing the same thing here you're just telling yourself it's a good friendship so yes i would tell her immediately and then you get your fucking answer yes don't sit here in this hell that you've put yourself in you either need to right now say i'm never going to speak to her ever again and then block her and like tell her tell her that and i had a friend or i have a friend who did that mm. many years ago he was in the friend zone with a girl and he really cared about her and he sat her down one day and he said listen i have feelings for you and she said, well, like, you know, can't we just be friends? You're going to ruin the friendship. And he's like, no, are you listening to me? I have feelings for you. And you're asking me to just be your friend. The fuck is wrong with you? No, like we're either, either you like me too, which it sounds like you don't, which is fair enough. You don't have to like me either that or we never see each other ever again. She was like, but what about our friendship? And he's like, this isn't a friendship. I want something more. This hurts. It hurts me to even fucking think about you, let alone hang out with you. Mm -hmm let alone when I see you with other guys and mate am this is all the shit that you're feeling I assume when you see her with someone else or when you think about her with someone else because you've gotten yourself to a point where you're obsessed with her so yes yeah, sit her down or text her if you want to but I it's better in person but just do whatever you want it doesn't really matter tell her hey I got feelings for you I freaking love you she's most likely to say like well I don't quite feel the same way but thank you and then you go okay well I can't hang out with you anymore and you have to cut it off you have to cut it off my friend it's not going to feel good which is why I said start telling yourself the stories of I will be okay without her you're going to have to brainwash yourself into that because you're not going to believe that because you've repeated the stories of I love her so much I miss her so I hope I wasn't too hard on you there but this is something I, I don't like seeing people suffer and I see people suffer because they let themselves be in the friend zone. You have to yank yourself out. And guys, everybody listening, please leave a comment for AM and tell him specifically like, bro, come on, you deserve better. Nothing against this girl. We don't even know her, but like you deserve better than to be suffering. Like you don't deserve this, please. Like there are other women out there. There's plenty more fish in the sea. Hell, even being alone for the rest of your life would be better than being in this hell. So guys, please leave him a comment. Please tell him like, bro, come on. Like you can't just stay in the friend zone. Don't suffer, man. We want you to be happy. Please be happy. Next question. Hard to focus. Mm. Says, why do I find it hard to convince myself? I don't know. I'm not God, bro. How, why do I find it hard to convince myself that moving to a big city... Uh, if I think that, it's to move... How, why do I find it hard to convince myself to move that, to a big, big city? He thinks it means that he'll have to work a lower paying job that's irrelevant to his profession professional background and education even though he knows it would improve chances of having an awesome dating and social life that's a weird not to place judgment but that's a weird story that moving to a big city means yeah, you're bro. gonna have to have a lower pain where you did you invent this fucking job opportunities from? in bigger cities right how, yeah how is moving to a big city how does that mean that you get, will get a lower paying job that's irrelevant to your professional background what is your professional background maybe it's like lumberjack maybe he literally like cuts logs okay. in the fucking if you're forest. a farmer yeah maybe he's a sure. farmer or, or a miner or some shit like he works on the mines and he's like bro if i move to a big city i literally can't fucking chop log i can't cut wood bro how which am i gonna is, chop that wood which is true okay if you're a lumberjack you might yeah. have to are change you a fucking profession. lumberjack bro are you a farmer. fucking lumberjack if he's a lumberjack man he would have the biggest fucking lats like he would just be ripped <laughs> bro just go to the city and like fuck all the city chicks like literally just wear your little just lumberjack like little wear his little like yeah his little fucking hipster lumberjack cafe. shirt yeah, yeah. Like, and just beard. go like fucking yeah. cut it up just be like just show them your axe and be like hey you like my axe girl and then like damn boy look at that axe and you're like yeah you want to see me use it i'm gonna use it on your pussy boy and then she'll be like damn that's mm. a good axe like mm. i like this fucking lumberjack you'll have a beard Imagine this guy is an actual lumberjack. Don't so, lumberjack. first of all, like, 
yeah, you're telling yourself a story that moving will mean a lower paying job. It's like, yeah, with that attitude, if I was your boss, yeah, I'd be like, fuck this guy. I'm going to pay him a lower paying job. Yeah. If you're like literally saying I'm going to get a lower wage, I'd be like, yeah, well, that's all you think you deserve. Why should I pay you more? So start working on or, or, or let that story go. As for irrelevant to my professional background, fair enough. You might be doing something that they don't have in the city. I understand that. Let, let's say that's true. Sure. The actual answer to this question is like, you're, you're basically saying, Andy, can you please just tell me to move to the city? So just move to the city. There you go. Do you want me to say anything else other than that? Like your, your question, again, people aren't great at phrasing the questions and please don't take that as a criticism. I used to be horrible at phrasing questions as well. It is something that takes practice. Your question is like, why do I find it hard to convince myself? It's like, that's not your question. What, do you really want us to sit here and analyze why you find it hard? Well, it could be because of your childhood and it could be because, you know, you're just lacking in comfort. Like, no, you don't actually care why you find it hard. Your real question is, can you please just tell me to shut up and move to the city? So hard to focus, shut up and move to the city. Okay, you can do your lumberjack profession later. And that's the point here. You're sitting here stressing, going like, oh my God, I'm going to get a lower paying job that's irrelevant to my background. It's like, bro, Which just doesn't... move to the city for like two years, sure. get a lot of women or find a woman who's awesome and then move back to wherever you want. Like, bro, you're not having an awesome dating and social life for the rest of your life. It's not one or the other. I get this question quite a lot. Like even in the coaching group, one of the guys basically said, you know, should I pursue this, this, this thing that I've always wanted to do, this passion of mine, but then I'd be giving up my career. And I was like, why don't you just do both? Why don't you just pursue your, your passion for the next five years and then go back to your career? And he's like, oh, I didn't think of that. And so, yeah, it's, it's well, it was a, it was a more nuanced conversation than that because I know he's going to listen to this fucking podcast. But yeah, it's, it's one of those questions where it's like, you can just do both, man. So my recommendation, it sounds like you're going to do this. You want me to just yell at you. So here you go. I'll give you what you want. Daddy will give you exactly what you want. Move to the fucking city for two, maybe three years. Work on your dating and social life. Live it up live large, show people your axe and your lumberjack shirts and all the wood trees you've cut, and then you can move back to the lower paying, so the higher paying job. Sure. And there's also a good chance that if you go and move to the city with some better self-talk and be like, fuck that, I'm going to get a great job that pays me yeah, as much as I Yeah, convince yourself you're going to get a higher paying job. Why there's... did you just decide you're going to get a lower paying job? What a shit fucking thing to tell yourself. A good chance you can make that a reality but if you tell yourself you're gonna have a lower paying job you will you'll manifest that you will make sure yep. that you don't you will you won't seek out jobs you won't try that are high paying because you'll be like no there's no point like i know i'm just gonna get a shit job and then you're gonna get yourself a shit job yeah luca that's a really common name in like european countries and stuff like that for like a male name but here it would be more like a female name wouldn't it would it be a male name yes it's a really like rare name here though no, it's not. Isn't it? No. Can we edit? Editor, can you please cut this out of the podcast? Do I have an editor? No. No. Okay. Fuck. Luca, why did you decide? It's not a name I've ever heard before. That's what I'm saying. Why did you decide to focus more on online than in-person approaching? Because I got laid so fucking much on online that I literally started just going like, I literally don't have time to go outside. I mean, I had time, but it was more like, I don't want to go outside and talk to girls. Sure. It's, and it's easier. Yeah, it was so stupidly easy, especially once I started doing the actual BDSM stuff. Then it was just easy mode because that was like me putting my BDSM pictures on my Tinder profile. It was screening hardcore for girls that obviously that want sex and are down for some kinky shit. And there was like, I would just sleep with a bunch of girls on the first date. And I got to a point where I was like, why do I want to go outside and talk to girls? Like this is really, it, it's almost like it became, and, and I intended to go outside and talk to girls, but I kept saying like, yeah, when, when Tinder quietens down a little bit, once I've gotten through all my current matches, I'll go outside and talk to more girls. And I was still kind of talking to girls. Well, I was for a long time, but it just slowly faded away. And I kept saying like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually I'll get back to it. Eventually I'll get back to it. And then I was just like, at some point I was like, why? And I've done a couple approaches in the last like year. Like, let's be honest, probably like four approaches in the last year. You know, you could say like lockdowns and all that shit, but I just don't need to, or I don't want to. And, and, and to make a better point here, because a lot of guys, when they do this stuff, they'll say, oh, I have to get amazing at Tinder. 
Mm. I have to get amazing at Hinge. I have mm. to get amazing at talking to girls in person. I probably want to get good in, in bars as well, so I can say I've done that. I'd like to sleep with some girls in my social circle and all that. I'd, I'd like to also date a girl and you know be in a relationship and maybe she finds some girls for us as well. Basically, I want to get good at all this stuff. Yeah, I want to do everything. Yeah, and what you find is what happens with every single freaking guy. Like I... I get that idea and I'll always push you guys to do that because at the start, you don't know what you'll enjoy or you don't know what will work out for you. Every single guy, I'm telling you guys, every single guy picks something that he ends up like, he won't even pick it. He'll just fall into it. Like I had a mate in my old city who slept with like 40 girls from just in person. Like he just would talk to them while we were walking around and shit. He was just super social. And he, I pushed him like a hundred times like bro install tinder install tinder you could be killing it you're so attractive bro you could be killing it and he just he installed it for like three weeks and just didn't even match like he matched with people but he didn't message them because he's like mm. i don't know i just he just never did and i've had plenty of coaching clients who've done that who've just only done in person and i'll say hey set up tinder and they will and they just won't use it or the opposite they will kill it like one of my coaching clients in particular you probably won't know who i'm talking about so whatever has like done a really good job on his Tinder, like over the years, like a really good job. And in person, I don't think he's ever slept with a girl from in person. Mm -hmm. But like every now and then he'll go through a period where he's like, okay, I want to talk to a bunch of girls in person. And he just kind of won't because Tinder's going so well. So it will it happens a lot. It happens probably with everyone that you eventually just fall into one or the other. I mean, some guys do a bit of both, but that's that's what happened with me at least. Yeah, and from my understanding, from what you've told me, Andy, is that at the start there was this sense of like i want to be able to talk to girls in person purely to prove that i can like it's this masculine yeah, energy of yeah, like sure. i i'm able to do this i have mm. enough masculine energy and the confidence to be able to go up to a girl and say hey you're cute masculine energy guys would you like to go on a date would you like to sleep with me essentially would you like this dick boy is what's being communicated and i think once you were able to prove that to yourself there was a sense of like okay cool i can do that now I'm going to choose to get laid in other ways. Yeah, it wasn't even a choice though. Yeah, like yes, everything you just said, correct. Yes, I proved it to myself more than, especially the, like the, I think the the most recent girl that I slept with from in person was like, I just met her. Like I met her and she was wearing this like really sexy dress. She had her tits out. She was really hot. And I was like, yo, hey, you're fucking sexy. And she just like responded so well to that. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, what are you up to? And she's like, my friends all ditched me and I bought this big bottle of alcohol and they all ditched me and I can't go to their house. And so now I'm just killing time until I catch the train home. And I was like, yeah, I'll drink with you. Let's go do something. And so she's like, okay. And like, I take her by the hand. We go to a park, we drink. I take her back to my place. We had sex. That was within like an hour of meeting her. And that was, that was like the cherry on the cake. At that point I was like, okay, like, holy shit. Like I can do this. I can literally meet another human being and have sex with them an hour later. And I've done that on Tinder like quicker than that, but that was like in person. And so, yeah, I think at that point, I just, I felt like I'd climbed my mountain and I'm not saying I'm not going to go talk to more girls in person. I do when I have coaching clients, like when I take them out in person, I would just naturally talk to a couple of girls, but not a lot, but a couple. It's not something that I'm focused on. So to answer the question, yeah, I'm not focused on it. And that's solely just because online so stupidly easy. Like it's so pathetically easy at this point. It really is. And I'm super, it's not my priority. You have to understand like getting laid is not my priority at all. Like not even close. It's not, it's like maybe it's like top, a maintenance thing. Yeah. It's like maybe the 10th most important goal. It's like number 10 on the list at this point in time. And so going out and cold approaching does take some, it's just not, I just don't give a fuck. There you go. It's something like that. But yeah, to answer the question for you, it's like, don't feel like, a lot of guys feel like they have to go and be good at everything. You don't really, man. You can build an amazing life not ever talking to a single girl in person. Now, I understand for some guys, they won't feel masculine if they never actually get good at it. Yeah, I fully understand that. But there are some guys that are just like, I don't think I ever really care. I'm quite happy to just get a couple of girls and then get a girlfriend from online. It, go for it. If, that, if you're being honest with yourself and you're not saying that out of fear, then yeah, you don't have to do it. Mika. Is it pronounced Mika? Micah. Micah. Mika. I think it's Micah, like Michael, right? I think it's Micah. Because Mika is a female name. See, that I know. Micah. All these Europeans have cool fucking names. Guys, you got to understand, like, all you Europeans have really cool names to us. It's just because it's different. It's like we would have cool names to them. 
people say your name Imogen okay, is really cool. I get cool. that all the time. Imogen is true. such a common name in Australia. People think it's a really cool name. Not many people my age. A lot of young people. There's at community. least one million people in this country with that name. So That's Micah true. says, how do I stop being passive in my relationships with friends? I've, init I've never initiated any plans. Okay, so questions like these, I'm gonna inter I'm not even gonna finish reading the question. So this is similar to the previous one where it's like, how do I stop being passive? Or how do I actually take some action? It's like by just taking action. Mm. That's the answer to this question. Mm. I know you want me to give you some really amazing answer and I kind of will in a way, but it's just taking action. And now if you struggle to take that action, like I said, break it down and do something easier. If you struggle to do that, okay, what's something even easier than you could do than that? So you're saying I've never initiated any plans. The answer is to initiate some plans. Now, if you don't know what that would look like, just right now, as you're listening to this, text one of your friends and say, hey, Luca. Or hey, what's another fucking European name? Hey, pal. Hey, fucking Maximilian. Would you like to grab a fucking beer? Cunt. Don't Make sure you say cunt. the cunt. No, it's very important. Very Australian. Okay, don't, don't say, say the word it. cunt. Hey, Luca, would you like to grab a beer? 6 p.m. Friday. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. That's it. That, hey, congratulations. You just initiated some plans. So you're sitting here saying, how do I take action? I don't know what answer you want me to give you. Sure. Because he goes on to say, I've, I've never, I don't even think to invite them out. Like I don't, I don't have the initiative. Like the thought doesn't pop up into my head of I should do that. But the fact that you're writing this question suggests the that... The thought clearly does pop up into your head. So the answer is do it. Yes. Or if yeah. you forget something that I do, I, I don't write it down physically, but I'm conscious when I haven't seen a friend in more than two weeks. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think about that, literally just set a calendar reminder every two weeks and like spread them out between like your different friends. Like maybe like once a month, have I hung out with yep. so-and-so? And if you see that pop up and it's like, oh no, I haven't, use that reminder, send them text, like you said, yep. like take some action. Another way you could do that is set a calendar reminder. So a reminder that would actually pop up in your fucking phone, like a notification that you can't miss to remind yourself once a week like make it pop up and say, invite one friend out to do something this week. And so as soon as you see that notification, oh shit, okay, uh, who haven't I seen in a little while? Tom, okay, let me message Tom. Hey Tom, come hang out with me. There you go, that's your initiating. So anytime you're, it's something you don't think of, and this question does come up a lot where people are like, it's like I don't even have the thought to do this. Yeah, you don't have, I can't put the thought in your head, can I? But what I can do and what you can do is keep yourself accountable with a reminder, like a calendar reminder. And I have plenty of things that I don't think to do. And so I set myself a reminder once a week so that I won't forget it. You do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just do that. So once a week, make it pop up, ha you know, I have to invite one friend to hang out with me. Congratulations. Now you are building the habit of someone who's initiating plans. Do that for three months. And now you become the person who invites people out. And people will say, oh, wow, you know, Micah, you invite people out all the time. Look at you having initiative. So yeah, guys, anytime you feel like you're, you have a personality trait that you want to change, don't just sit there and go like, man, I'm so passive. You know, I have this bad personality trait. No, set calendar reminders to remind yourself once a week, hey, work on this thing. Hey, don't forget about working on this thing. You can also have an accountability partner, which is something that I talk about all the time. I make all of my coaching clients have an accountability partner. And any of you guys that aren't doing coaching, just do the same thing. Pick one of your friends or pick someone from my forums or fuck, even write a comment in the YouTube comments on this video saying, hey, who wants to be my accountability partner? And you guys can ask, you, you hang out once a week on Zoom or something, or just send each other messages or whatever. Zoom works best. And once a week, that person will say, hey, Micah, did you initiate plans with anyone this week? And if you answer like, oh, fuck, no, I didn't. Your accountability partner will say, okay, stop what you're doing. We're not going to keep talking. Right this second, text one of your friends right now. I want to watch you do it. Right in front of me, do it. And then you'll do it. And you'll go, thanks, bro, for keeping me accountable. Mm -hmm. And then you'll keep them accountable on whatever they want to keep you accountable on. Mm -hmm. And so that's probably the easiest way to do it. Get someone else to remind you or put it in your calendar so you remind yourself once a week. Lots of these habits or all the habits that I've built, I've used this kind of method or I've used an accountability, like I use you, you are my accountability partner. Yep. We talk once a week, we go for a big walk and we talk about everything and I will get you to ask me questions. Hey Andy, did you remember to, right now it's eat my fucking fruits and vegetables because my coach wants me to eat more vegetables. And so it's like, hey, did you eat vegetables this week? Yes, I did. 
or oh shit i forgot okay let me remember to do it this week because i don't want to keep coming to you and saying no i didn't do it over and over again so let me fix something Mm -hmm. calendar reminders work as well so Mm -hmm. yeah start working on those personality traits you don't have to be stuck anything to add no this was fucking good yeah so the point of this was like obviously to answer a lot of your questions but to just tell you guys that like if we can do this you can do it too and one thing i was going to say at the start but i forgot is i want to make it really clear like when i say we built it up to fifty thousand dollars a month when i say you guys can do it too there's going to be a lot of like limiting beliefs that are going to come up because they always do i always had limiting beliefs that you know i always do one of them i'm sure that's going to come up is people are probably going to say yeah but andy you had Emmy helping you and like you have helped me a fuck ton but i want to make it really clear that you can do it alone like i have so many friends that have made money it's how many of my friends actually make more money than me but you don't need a girlfriend you don't need a business partner Mm. yes it helped yes it made things easier for me and so you can absolutely do the same maybe it it, it's like 20 percent harder for you because you don't have a business partner maybe it's 50 percent harder for you but there will be things that you do that i didn't do there will be personality like strengths that you have that i didn't have you know we talked at the start about how i wasted so many years despite having you pushing me I had to deal with my own hopelessness and insecurity and and limiting beliefs and all of that. So Mm. I just want to make it really clear. Please don't sit there and go like, oh, but he had, it's two people building a business. I couldn't do it by myself. It's like, yes, you can. Even if it takes you longer, who gives a shit? Just don't quit. So we'll make that really fucking clear. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you want coaching, after I said at the start of the video that I will do a big spiel for coaching now, I literally can't be bothered. Like, so if you guys want coaching, fucking sign up for coaching. I'll do a better pitch for my coaching next video, I promise. But mm. this was fun. I enjoyed doing this. This was good. I yeah, hope you guys like my hats. hats. Yeah. I probably interrupted you a little bit. Yeah, I interrupted you a little bit too. That's true. Adios, guys. Go out there and what do these people need to do? Go out there and crush your goals. Go crush your damn goals. <laughs> do you pause? No.